And I'm doing it tonight. This brainwashing of our Muslim women, where has it come from? <laughs> it has come from that Christian Jewish world, the white world that is ruling the world today. Wherever the Christian Jewish world has not been able to influence our people and brainwash our people, our women don't behave like that. If you go to Afghanistan, go to Afghanistan and see the Muslim women in Afghanistan. Go to many parts of Africa which have not as yet been touched by the white world order. And you see Muslim women who are not at all uncomfortable with plural marriages. Hmm? Did the Prophet shake hands with women? Come on, answer me. Did the Prophet shake hands with women? No, he did not. No, he did not. We never did that in our history. Jazakallah. Men and women in Islam never shook hands. Never. Today, men and women in Islam are shaking hands. In Trinidad, they're worse than that. They're kissing. All over the place, they're kissing. <laughs> Where did this come from? This came from the Christians and the Jews. When they started shaking hands, we follow them. As the prophet prophesied, he said, even if they were to go down into the lizard's hole, you go down into the lizard's hole with them. And so we should not shake hands with women. Yes, they're going to feel offended. But it's better that they be offended than your Lord be offended. Allah put a beard on the face of the male. Of the male. Did he? Yeah, I think he did it. Would you agree with me? That Allah put the beard on the face of the male? How are you so quiet? Why did he put a beard on the face of the male? So you can distinguish the male from the female from a distance without having to look to any other part of the body. And men always wore their beards, always, all through history. It didn't matter which religion you belonged to, until when? Until the Jews and the Christians shaved it off. Which Jews and Christians? The one in the white world. And when they shaved it off, guess what happened? All of us shaved it off. Illa masha'Allah. And those who didn't shave it off, they kept an apology of a beard. The Prophet ﷺ followed instructions given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permitting women to pray in the masjid. He said, do not prevent your women from coming to the masjid. A woman has a choice. She can either pray at home or she can pray in the masjid. She gets the same blessings. But for a man, he gets 27 times more if he comes to the masjid than he prays at home. Listen to the hadith and tell me what are you going to do with this hadith. If you say that you follow the sunnah, then tell me what are you going to do with this hadith. He said, أَحْسَنُ الصُّفُوفِ لِلْرِجَالِ أَوَّلُهَا وَشَرُّهَا آخِرُهَا The best row for the men is the first and the worst is the last the one with the greatest danger is the last why what danger is this Santa Pio Scorpion what danger is there for the last row and he went on to say Ahsanu Sufufi Linnisa Akhiruha wa Sharruha Awaluha and the best row for the woman is the last. 
And the worst, the one with the greatest danger is the first. Could anyone explain this to me? If you're listening to this tape or this CD, can you explain this to me? If you put the woman upstairs, well then why should she go in the last row? <laughs> if you put the woman in an annex, well then why should she go in the last row? If you put a partition between the men and the woman, well then why does she have to go to the last row? If you put up a partition, you should take this hadith and throw it in the garbage bin. Because the only way that this hadith makes sense, the only way that you can apply the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, the only way, whether you like it or whether you don't, whether you're comfortable with it or you are not, it is irrelevant. Islam doesn't come from you. Islam comes from Allah and His Messenger. And the worst place to change Islam is in the masjid. Because you change it in the masjid when you go there, you ain't getting no water. You ain't going to give you no water. You ain't going to say you change the religion. The worst place to change the religion is in the house of Allah. What this hadith tells us is that men and women prayed in the same space. It matters not. It is irrelevant whether you like it or whether you don't like it. Whether, you whether you're comfortable or you're uncomfortable with it because Islam may come from you. You like the religion, keep it and accept it. You don't like it, you can leave it. But don't attempt to change it. Men and women prayed in the same space. Men at the front and women at the back. And there was no barrier in between. And so when a woman prayed, she prayed not only with her ears, but also with her eyes. Where is that today? Huh? It gone? Illa masha Allah. One or two must still in Trinidad. Eha no parda. All the rest have it. Worse than that, when we grew up in this country, it wasn't like here in, San, in Princess Town where the women at the back and men at the front. When we growing up, it's men on one side and women on the other side. That is what we know as religion in Trinidad. And you had a, a parda going down the road vertically. Not that way. So the stuff used to have men and women in the same stuff. Yeah? Men and women used to be standing in the same stuff in Trinidad for donkey years. And if the men, the men, the first row of the men had to go back a little bit, you had to tell the woman at the side to go back one step. You're shaking your head now. You recognize that we used to pray with men and women in the same row, with a parada in between. Yeah? That is the sense. That is the extent of the abandonment of the sunnah. And when you try to bring back the sunnah, you meet all kind of opposition. But inshallah, when we build the Muslim village, and we build the, the masjid in the Muslim village, there will be no parda between the men and women. He said that when you go down in sajda, when you go down in sajda, and the Imam says, Allahu Akbar, to come up from sajda. The women must keep their heads down for some time to allow the men to sit up and then the women must raise their head. Did he not say that? Well, where is the need for that? If you put them upstairs or you put them in an annex or you put them behind some partition. Truly, the religion is gone and all that remains now is the shell. Everything is changing today. Our food is changing today. Allah provided food for us, the great engineer. 
and he gave to the food a genetic composition that the food will not only provide nutrition the food will also function medicinally food has other things to do it is the food that you eat the food that you eat that will that will affect the semen that a man produces he said that the time will come when one man will have to maintain how many women somebody help me huh 50 women one man will have to maintain 50 women that's coming up what that implies is that there's going to be a dramatic decline in baby boys being born that has already started in some parts of the world Singapore for example I have visited Singapore so many times I have so many students in Singapore but the enormous number of girls and women who approach me and my wife Maulana can you help me I want to get married can you help me I want to get married can't get a husband you have faced that situation here in Trinidad yet you know you should go to Singapore and see it the proportion of women to men is now so great that it's a problem out there what is it that's going to cause this alarming decline in baby boys being born I believe that it will be something connected with the food that we eat that will affect sperm production I believe that when you change the genetic composition of food you alter that capacity of food to do other things besides provide nutrition and that is what we're doing today eating the genetically modified food finally because I do not want to continue indefinitely finally we have followed the Jews and Christians in the most disastrous of all down into the lizard's hole the Prophet warned of an age that will come he said when time will move swiftly a whole year will pass like a month and a month like a week and a week like a day etc and then when he was asked why will there be this perception of time moving faster and faster and his reply was that instead of the zikr of Allah being in the heart the dunya will be in the heart when the dunya takes control of the heart and we believe that this is the only world we live for this world we do not recognize any reality beyond this world that's called materialism that materialism has today come to the world from the Christians and the Jews and it has swept all of mankind illa masha Allah what is the price that we pay when we embrace materialism when we forget Allah and the dunya takes control of the heart when the fear of Allah no, long, no longer resides in the heart you afraid the policeman but you afraid Allah I'll tell you what is the price that we'll pay the heart becomes dead the heart can no longer see it can no longer hear it can no longer understand knowledge now comes from only external sources knowledge does not come from internal sources 